Well, welcome to the Wine Drinkers podcast. It's lovely to meet you, to email oh, yeah. you. Cheers. Yes, I've got my wine ready. I can see you. <laughs> yeah. Very good. I hope you'll like it. Delicious. I started it last night. Oh, nice. It's very buttery. <laughs> exactly what I like. Thank you. <laughs> good. Okie dokie. So there are only two rules to this podcast. Yeah. One is quick answers. Good. And the second one is one sip after each question for me and one sip after each answer for you. Okay. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so let's get ready. Are you ready for the first question? Yes? Sure. Perfect. So do you remember the first wine you have ever drank? I think it was in a family supper in Belgium, um, in Brussels, and we were all given wine to taste. And I've actually got a photograph of us all doing this. Um, nice. yeah. <laughs> oh, and you didn't forget your sip. Very good. <clears throat> what is something no one knows about you? I've got curly hair. Okay. <laughs> in three words, can you tell me what kind of little girl were you? A boy. <laughs> mm. I was a boy. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> I really wanted to be a boy. I was very much, uh, you know, I had three brothers and I was a rough and tumble tomboy. Nice. Well, I guess, well, that comes on to the next question. You went to an all boys school and was the first girl there and the only girl for a while, right? Correct. And that was like normal for me because I'd always been in all male environments. And, fact, and how was that? Because, I mean, I kind of would dream to be in a normal boys' school. Um, it, it was like family life, you know. It was, mm -hmm. it was like I knew. It was pretty odd, but, I mean, I got on with the boys. And there wasn't too much teasing. That's fair so enough. I've had a pretty good time. Good. <laughs> and uh, how long was it until the next girl came along? Well, actually, we did start with one other girl. Okay. I did start with one other girl, but um, it became clear on the first night that we weren't going to be intimates. And yeah. so we went our separate ways. So in effect, I was the only girl in terms of my experience. And she must have felt the same. And then I guess about a year or so later, another girl arrived uh, called Sarah, and then another one called Camille. And then by the time I left, we had almost had a netball team. Wow, you must have had so many boys over there ask you on dates. Well, I left when I was about 13 and I was very ungainly and okay, and, you know, I was a lumpen teenager. I wasn't, um, you know, a little sprightly, you know, twig. Oh. twig. <laughs> yeah. So what is your most fun childhood memory? Um. I guess when the time when we we decided to sneak into the porch of the house and fill all the Wellington boots that were lined up in the front porch with water. Ooh. And then my aunt and mother came out and my aunt actually put her foot in. A boot. And my mother was furious and she chased us around the garden with a stick. That's a memory of, I recall with great pleasure. <laughs> That's very naughty. And still excitement, yeah. <laughs> Your sip? Oh. I'm keeping track. <laughs> I would love to know what was Christmas like growing up in the Johnson's household? Um, hold on. Oh, sorry, there's kids moving around. Um, I don't know how to characterise it. I mean, always if we were in the West country, it was kind of cold and crowded, mm -hmm. uh, but hilarious. And we would, um, my uncle would dress up as Father Christmas and terrify me if I woke up in the night, because he was quite a scary guy. And very exciting if it snowed on the farm. And once we were snowed in, always good fun, uh, but not necessarily very organized or um, comfortable. <laughs> I guess a bit of chaos is good at Christmas yeah. time. Yeah. Your sip? Sorry. <laughs> if you could be a historical heroine, who would you be? Um, 
You know, I haven't looked at these questions in advance. I'm just going to have to go off the top of my head. Oh, wow. Okay. Maybe um, the first, that girl who swam the channel and beat the, the making oh, movie. Yes. Or okay. Amy Johnson, who flew across the Atlantic. Someone like that. Someone daredevil who yeah. beat the boys at their own game. Absolutely. It's just to like strengthen women. <laughs> If you could have a drink with three inspirational people, oh. dead or alive, yeah. who you haven't met yet, who would they be? I'd love to meet Winston Churchill, mm. Elizabeth the first, and Jesus. Okay, wow. Okay, well, that's going to be very difficult to <laughs> round them up, but hey. <laughs> yeah, but interesting, <laughs> interesting, you know, especially in lockdown when we haven't seen anyone. Uh huh. Yes, I've seen almost no one except my mum. Yeah. <laughs> Going yeah. crazy. Yeah. Your sip? Sorry. <laughs> Where are your two favorite places to have some wine in London? Um, I enjoy going to the electric mm -hmm. and I enjoy. I, I like going, where else do I like? I love going to the Woolsey. Okay, yeah. Well, let's do that, the electric and the Woolsey. But the okay. wine is better at Oswald's. Okay, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Have you ever been to Palm Mile 67? No, what's that like? It's very nice. It's a private members wine club. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll take you there. Are you a member? I am indeed, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, just then. checking my hair. God, I'm having my hair blow dried tomorrow, so I do apologize. For no, that. I love your hair. Mine is so flat, it's ridiculous. It's not good. <laughs> okay, so what was the most memorable time you've had some wine with your family? Oh, um, I don't know. I mean, that's just with my. Um, I, I'll have to come back to it. The thing okay. about wine is it turns into a fun evening rather than a memorable one. <laughs> and to forget. Um, yeah, no, it's true. I'm trying to think myself, what would it be? I guess. I yeah, think it's just... you know, when I toasted my having my babies or something like that. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. After they're born, you know, you wet the baby's head and you're so happy it's all gone well. <laughs> or, or you're both still alive I should say that's the best you can hope for absolutely yeah your sip what about your most awkward memory oh I've got involving wine <laughs> <laughs> um probably on a date or something when I was in my early 20s and I went out to a wine bar with a guy and I was sick in the toilet <laughs> After I drank so much wine in Jimmy's wine bar. And I thought, I'll never drink wine again. And of course I did. And I love it. And I, if I go to a party, if they have champagne, I often, I love champagne, but I prefer really good white. Mm -mm -mm. And I like sticking with one thing throughout the evening. Yeah, I absolutely do as well. Just mm -hmm. one thing. But I do love champagne. Champers is my go-to. Champagne, I'm a real bore about champagne. Mm -mm. I mean, if I'm going to commit to champagne... It's got to be really cold and a really one I like that's still fizzy. So then I can drink it all night. But as soon as it's slightly not ice cold, I'm not interested. That's if fair enough. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, you got expelled from school, didn't you? And it was the same school as Lucian Freud, I heard. In your book, <laughs> we there time. so I would love to know, I know why you got expelled. I think I was expelled because I just refused to obey the rules, which mm. is why I find lockdown really difficult. I'm not one for really, really petty rules running my life. So this is like a living hell for me mm. trying to be good. I think I was expelled mainly for wearing very high stilettos and very tight trousers. Oh, okay, so that is what it is. That's my story. The headmaster may give you a different one. <laughs> okay, so what do you love? Well, what would you love to do but are not able to do? Um, sing, play the piano, and draw. Okay. 
Do you not play the piano, sing or draw? No. Well, okay. I mean, I do, but very, very badly. So I'd like to be able to do them well. Speak uh, German as well. Oh, yes. I would like to speak German too, actually. Josip? Okay. <laughs> So is it true that you ended up with pneumonia after choking on an eggshell? Yes, it is. And uh, what was the story behind that? Because I, that actually really shocked me. I boiled egg on the wet before for breakfast on the way to school. Mm -hmm. And my brother, who's now prime minister, made me laugh so much that I choked on the egg and the eggshell went down into my lung. My lung collapsed. I went to school and my mother me to the doctor and said she has inhaled eggshell and they said you're being hysterical but then she it turned out that my mother was right and they had to do an operation to remove the eggshell from my lung and they gave it to her in a little jar that's they the truth it to her. oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> i did so you were the first female to graduate trainee at the financial times how did that, that feel like and um I was very, very proud to, be, to join the Financial Times after Oxford. And I stayed there for five years. And um, I still really rate that paper, the pink one. The FT, I, the, the foreign office I did in the middle, I went off for a year on secondment and I thoroughly enjoyed that too. But I was pregnant and I don't really remember much of it apart from sleeping on the sofa in my office during the day. But then I found a box of work and I found I actually did quite a lot of work when I was there and wrote quite a few papers. That's one thing I, I love about reading your stuff. It's just, um, I love your humour. <laughs> well, thank you. And, you know, I don't actually laugh at much to things. I, I smile a lot, but I don't laugh at things and find things funny very easily. But I just love the way you portray things and you see things. Thank you. That's very sweet of you, Sophie. <laughs> Okay, so um, what was it like to be an editor at The Lady? Well, that, I can't really answer that in a short way. Mm. Um, it was hilarious. I've written a book about it called A Diary of the Lady, which is, I think, my best book. And if you're interested in really knowing what it was like, it's all there. I mean, it was fantastically good fun um, while it lasted. Nice. Okay, I'll buy it tomorrow. It's a nice it for your mummy, honestly. She, I promise you it is. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> your sip? If you could give me two big challenges as yeah. a journalist, what would it be? So for anybody who wishes to be a journalist, what would the two biggest challenges be? Well, in terms of while they're being a journalist or as to? As to becoming one. So if they want to become a very good journalist, what would be the challenges they can expect? Um, re really listen to what people say. Journalism is about listening. Uh, if you're a, a really good reporter, you have to be a very, very, you have to notice and you have to be very curious. So I would say, be very curious, read a lot and read all the newspapers you can. Don't be one of these people who says, I don't read the newspapers because, you know, what is the point of that? You know, don't don't show off about the fact that you don't know anything about the industry. Absolutely. Yes. You need to keep informed a maximum. Yeah. And don't just read mail online. Read the Financial Times, read the Washington Post, read the New Yorker, you know, educate yourself because you're entering a business where everybody is really well read. And really, it's really competitive. And you're only as good as your next story. So true. You're giving me goosebumps. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I feel like I need to read more. <laughs> your sip? Actually, the next question is about the wine we're drinking. Oh, it's so good. So it's from Alois Wine. No, and I'm thank you. you thank him for very much for the delicious bottles thank you he was very very excited the perfect choice for me I absolutely love it okay so in your book you mentioned about a procedure of becoming an MP and comparing it to childbirth yep could you just well what I said tell me about it what I said was I tried to be an MEP which is a member of the European Parliament mm -hmm. and I lost 
I didn't win. I did not become an MEP. And I said to my husband at the end, he said, will you ever do it again? And I said, no, it's not like childbirth. You never forget the pain and you don't have a lovely baby at the end of it. It's just, it was a lose, lose, but you learned that I did learn a lot about, about politics and public life and campaigning and myself and all those things. So it was a very worthwhile experience and I got a book out of it. Fantastic. Thank you. Yosef? <laughs> So your family is more multicultural than people often realize. I think you've got a half uh, French grandmother yes. and your great grandfather was Turkish, right? Correct. That's very accurate. Yeah. And how did that affect who you are today or how did it make you become who you are today? Well, I'm very proud of, of my ancestry. I have a Christian, I've got four grandparents and one's Christian, one's Jewish and one's Muslim. And I think that therefore I'm, everybody thinks that the Johnsons are just this like posh English family, but but it's not the case. You know, we didn't have a lot of money and we come from a very varied background um, and with only one English grandparent. Um, therefore, you know, the appearances belie the reality of, of who we are. and because we went to smart schools, it didn't mean we haven't had a lot of money. We, we just didn't. We lived quite a modest life. And my father was a civil servant and my mother was had four children and she was a painter. You know, that was that we had, that was, we went to good schools, but that was what the money went on. That's fair enough. And I heard that your grandmother was called Granny Butter. Is that mm -hmm. how you called her? Mm -hmm. you, you know why I have to bring this up? It's because I'm obsessed by butter. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot not have butter in my fridge otherwise I go mental <laughs> it's a very weird obsession but I just had to say mm. that I loved that love butter. <laughs> I love butter too thank you so what are the biggest challenges of being the sibling of someone who causes as many debates um but like you know I'll give that a very quick answer um it's that whatever you say is regurgitated with an angle that's about him. So, you, mm. know, you know, Boris's sister says X or Y, Boris's sister, you know, that, and I, you know, you can't say anything just on your own account anymore. You only speak as the prime minister's sister, mm -mm -mm. unless you are very, very careful. So you have to be quite careful as to what you say. Okay, Yosef. How many more? <laughs> Only a few more, I promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so when you were in Celebrity Big Brother, mm -hmm. I would love to know what were the alcohol rules or wine rules oh. in particular. Well, what happened was in the evening, you would be about, they'd ring a bell or they'd say that there's alcohol in the fridge and everyone would go crazy and they'd run and get the alcohol out. And then they'd try and get you a bit drunk and, you know, they wouldn't, They'd put lots of different things in the fridge. So you mixed your drinks. And those were the rules. And if you behave badly or you break the rules, they, they would deny you alcohol. You know, Ooh. basically it was the most unhealthy life. Uh -uh -uh. Okay, oh thank God. you. I heard that. When did I do that? 2018, I think. Yeah, I saw it was in 2018, yeah. Got I it. don't know if I could do it, honestly. Mm. It was like a million years ago. Was it fun at least? No, hated it. Oh. <laughs> well, at least you did it. You tried it and that's well, done. You know, it was a job and it was very well paid. <laughs> Perfect. So I often, and many other people, associate success with a good morning routine. Would you agree with that statement? And do you have a morning routine? I don't really. <laughs> I sometimes get up and play tennis um, and then I get on with my day, my right. Mm -hmm dog walking um yeah so I'm I'm not particularly disciplined and I love my sleep I mean my idea of a good time is being in bed <laughs> that's fair enough your sip social media has a massive impact on people these days and I know you as many others have probably suffered from cyberbullying. so would you have any tips at all 
for people who get affected by it to not get so affected by it? Um, well, once, I mean, the only tip I have is I once engaged with somebody who had said something really unpleasant about me on an Instagram post. And I think Instagram is quite a nice medium. Mm -hmm. So I just, she said I'd come into a shop and I'd been rude to her. And I responded to her and I said, I, you're probably right. And I'm sorry if I didn't make eye contact or something. And she was, then it, she replied to me and we became, we just had a really civil exchange. And I realized that, you know, it, it generates a huge amount of anger and underneath the anger, there's somebody who's actually reaching out in a weird mm -hmm. way. If they're reaching out in a hostile way, it's, it is a sort of form of contact that they're trying to make. Otherwise they wouldn't bother. And we ended on a nice note and I said, I'm sorry. And she said she was sorry. And it was kind of positive. So what I would say is recognize that the people who are doing that, they're coming from a place of insecurity from them and not of hatred of you. Um, and remember that. And the nicest people are the ones who would never do that. And the happiest people are the ones who would never do that. So you've got to reckon they're just unhappy. Oh, that was really nicely yes. said. Hmm. Who inspires you the most? Oh, I don't know. My mum, because she never complains. Um, and she's had uh, Parkinson's since the age of 40 and she's just fantastic and so brave and so uncomplaining and so talented. And she's my heroine. Oh, love to hear. Yeah, my father had Parkinson's as well. No. Um, it's very, very difficult. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You have written seven books and that's a massive, massive achievement. How long did it actually take you to write your first one and to get published? Hold on, it's the doorbell. Do you mind? No, it's fine. Hold on. It's okay. So neighbor, neighbor with a new puppy. I mean, how irritating. Oh. So, um, the first book took like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was harder yeah. than I thought. You know, writing a novel, you think, oh, I can write a novel. And then you just think, this is so bad. And you have to start again. You have to start again. I guess the thing is to try not be too perfectionist on it and just give it well, your you whole soul editor, so you know it's got to be something you can show um uh, no but it was in a way it was my most successful novel so I did something right and I don't know what it was <laughs> and to get published it was did it take quite a long time as well or no because the publishers asked me if I would write the book so oh, I, okay perfect it came to me fantastic that's the best way <laughs> Okay, so you were awarded Bad Sex Prize for fiction. And I would love to know why. Because I didn't oh, I read that piece at I all. I'll tell you why. My, the, book, the, the thing I wrote wasn't that terrible. Mm -hmm. They thought I would turn up and collect the prize. So that's why they gave it to me that year. I promise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's that time, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So that's, uh, that's what happened. I feel very proud of it. I wish I could win it every year. <laughs> because of your surname, do you have many restrictions on what you can or cannot say? Because, I mean, you strike me as super, super honest, but I guess there are certain things you can't actually say. Or can well, you? you know, I just have to be a lot more discreet than I would normally be because it can end up in the papers, whatever I say. Mm -mm -mm. so yeah it's hard difficult your sip oh yeah <laughs> yes you have a guts to do what most of us don't mm -hmm. like showing your breasts on national tv right no, I didn't. <laughs> did you I not could... no of course not was that not a thing i thought it was a thing of course i didn't I pretended to. Okay, well, it did seem like it and it went all over. Okay. I know, I know, but I didn't. What I did was they just, I had, I was wearing like a boob tube. Yeah. 
and they pixelated the screen so it looked as if I had but I didn't I mean it was so stupid they're so naughty aren't they it's like that's the premium example of things which can just be said in the, um, and portrayed in the wrong way but anyway you still have the guts to say generally what um, people wouldn't in many ways I mean through your books and through like your interviews you've got a very honest way to say things and I just wanted to know for people who would like to gain more confidence do you have any tips for them, for people who want to put themselves out there but are too shy to actually say what they think? Um, well, I would say, you know, be yourself, but that doesn't often help if you feel that you, the person you are is very shy. Um, I think I, I pretended to be more confident than I was. I think it took, took, took me to about the age of 45 to gain, to become fully confident and I think women need to build their confidence it's really frightening being a woman asking for a pay rise or talking in public it is and um, I found it frightening and I completely understand that other people do and I've learned just by the you use the muscle and then it becomes more habitual but it's always frightening yeah no absolutely I guess people just need to go for it and um yeah, if you don't try, you don't get. All you risk is a no in life. That's what my father used to say. Mm. We do need to say this. As a sister of our current Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, is there a message you want to give for Christmas? Or Well, I mean, I don't have any public platform at all uh, to say anything, as it were, to the nation. And I wouldn't presume. Um, I just say hang in there and... I'm sorry, it's all been such a nightmare, just everything. <laughs> and it can't go on being as bad. It can, things can only get better, everybody. We must drink to that. Absolutely. Drink Italian wine, Eloise wine. <laughs> and sometimes what I do to finish off is I do a little sing-along. Oh, my God. I, I, I sing terribly, I promise. I am so rubbish. I don't know if you saw, like, uh, so I interviewed the grandson of Mandela, Nelson Mandela. And he sang a lovely song and I completely ruined it. <laughs> Good. Can you just, can't you just play that one again? What do you want to play? Why don't we do Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but we have to do it together. Okay. All right. One, two, two three. three. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very funny nose. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph the Red. <laughs> See, I'm terrible. I told you. I told you. Anyway, thank you so much for being such a great sport. Um, it's been such an honor to have you here today. Thank you. This is to you, to strong women, to uh, inspirational people of the world. And um, yeah, I thank hope you. to see fun. you very soon. <laughs> thank you, Sophie. And happy Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.